In this video, we're going to show you how to work with the Backpack Traveler theme. So this theme was released by our Mikado profile here on Theme Forest. The theme was designed specifically for travel bloggers. It comes packed with options. There are many different elements and layouts that you can use to showcase your adventures. The theme also comes with these beautiful pre-designed pages that you can import into your own site and use them as a starting point. So let's get started. This here is my local site and I now have Backpack Traveler installed and activated. I'm going to navigate to plugins. And here we can see that Backpack Traveler comes with several bundled plugins. Here we have Backpack Traveler Core. This plugin is absolutely necessary for you to install and activate in order to use our theme. We also offer an Instagram and Twitter plugin. These plugins are optional. Slider Revolution and WordPress Bakery Page Builder. These are premium plugins that come bundled with our theme. You do not need to purchase them separately in order to use them with Backpack Traveler. Slider Revolution is optional, and as for WordPress Bakery Page Builder, we recommend using this page builder in order to have the layouts that are showcased on our demo site. So now that I've installed Backpack Traveler and activated that Backpack Traveler Core plugin, I now have our themes options here in the admin panel. So I'm going to navigate to Backpack Traveler Options Import. This is the section where you can import demo content. The demo import process is beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, we will link another tutorial under the video description so you can go ahead and refer to that tutorial if you would like to import the demo. So in this video, I'm going to assume that you have the demo imported. Let's take a look at my site now. So this is my home page with the imported demo content. In the following section, we're going to talk about how various aspects of this page were created. First of all, we're going to talk about the header. We're going to then talk about posts. We're going to talk about various elements on the page. And finally, we're going to talk about the footer. All right, so let's take a look at the header. Backpack Traveler comes with several different header layouts that you can use for your site. On this page here, we have a header that has a menu at the top and there is a logo in the center underneath the menu. Now let's open up a different page. On this page here, we see that the logo is in the upper left corner and it's smaller than the logo on our previous page. So you might be wondering how did we set up these two different headers on two different pages. So let's take a look at our theme options. We previously mentioned Backpack Traveler options, so these are themes global options. Over here in the sidebar, you will see various sections such as general, fonts, header, and more. The settings that you apply here will affect all pages of your site. So here I'm going to click on header. And now we see the header options for our site. Here it says choose header type. And as we can see, there are several different header layouts that you can choose. Currently, I have a standard header selected. So that's this header here. Now, how did we have a different header on this page? Now let's open up this page. I'm going to scroll down the page. And here we see these boxes that say Mikado General, Mikado Blog, Mikado Logo. So these boxes here, these are local page settings. And the settings that you apply here, they will affect this page only. So here, if I expand the Mikado header options, it says choose header type. And here we see that on this particular page, we've selected a different header type. It says centered with down logo. So the options that you see here on the page, many of them are the same options that you will find in global options. 
what happens is if you set a certain option globally and you set a different option in your page, the page option will take precedence. So that's because local page settings override global settings. In order to learn more about how local and global settings work together, you can check out our video on how global and local page settings in the Bridge theme work. We will leave that link under the video description. Bridge is a different theme, so the options and settings you see might be different than on your own theme, but the logic behind global and local page settings is the same. All right, so let's take a look at our header a bit more closely. We can see that it's comprised of several different elements. We have a logo, we have a menu, and then we also have widgets. In the following section, we're going to take a look at each of these elements individually. So let's start with the menu. I'm going to navigate to Appearance Menus. I'm going to click on Manage Locations. So Backpack Traveler comes with several different menu locations. And as we've previously seen, there are several different header layouts that you can choose for your site. And the menu locations seen here, they correspond to the different header layouts. So depending on the header layout that you're using, you will want to use the corresponding menu location. So this header here, this header uses the main navigation area. So this is where you can edit this particular menu. You can also assign a new menu to this menu location. Now, if we take a look at our demo site, we see that here next to travel, there's a little star. So currently on my local site, I don't have a star. So let's see how can I add that. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this main menu. I'm going to expand this menu item and here it says featured icon. So I'm going to set star and let's save this menu. I'm going to refresh my page. And now I also have this star next to my menu item. Now let's take a look at these widget areas next to the logo. I'm going to navigate to appearance widgets. Backpack Traveler comes with several different widget areas, and some of these widget areas belong to the header. Now, similar to the menu locations, the various widget areas belong to various header layouts. So these areas here that we are looking at, they belong to these two widget areas here. So let's open them up to see what's contained inside. So here in the centered with logo down header left widget area, we see a text widget. I'm going to expand this widget so that we can take a better look. And inside we've copied and pasted two icon with text short codes. So this is the first short code. That's this element here. And this here is the second short code. Now let's take a closer look at the short codes. Here it says custom icon and it's followed by a number. Now this number here, this is the ID of my image. That's this image here. And when you import your demo content, the images in your media library might have different ID. If you want to change this image, you can simply enter a different image ID. Let's go to the media library. If you click on your image here in the URL bar at the very end, after the equal sign, you will find the image ID. So you can simply copy this number and then go back here and replace the existing number. And when you save this widget, the image will be replaced. So I'm going to refresh my page. And indeed, the image is now replaced. Looking at this icon with text shortcode, you can also change the text. So here it says get inspired. So you can enter something different if you'd like. You can also replace the link that this element leads to. 
All right, and now we also have another image with text shortcode, and it's pretty much the same as the previous one. So once again, here you can enter a different image ID if you want to change this image here. You can also change the text, and you can also enter a different link. All right, so that covers this widget area. Now, these widgets here, they're very similar, so you will want to edit this widget area here. Once again, we have a text widget, and inside this text widget, we also have two icon with text shortcodes, so you can edit them in the same way that I've previously explained. Now, let's take a look at these widget areas next to the menu. These widgets are added through these two widget areas here. However, when I open up these widget areas, we can see that they don't contain anything. So let's go into the page backend to see what's happening. So here I am on the page under the section Mikado header. And when I scroll down, there's a section here that's called widget areas. And in these two fields, it says choose custom header widget area one and two. Now, if I was to set this as default, then the widget areas that my header would be using are these two widget areas. However, for this particular page, we're actually linking two custom widget areas. So custom widget areas, you can create them here at the bottom of the widgets page. These here widget areas that have an X mark next to them, these are all custom widget areas. You can also delete them by clicking on the X icon. So let's see which custom widget area this page is using. It says header widget top left. So let's find this custom widget area. So here it is. Let's expand this widget area. And here we have a custom HTML widget. So in this custom HTML widget, we added a menu. That's this menu here. And you can change this menu by editing some bits of the code here. First of all, we see it says source and we have a link. This link here, it's pulling this little globe icon here. So if you want to change this image next to destinations, you can simply enter the link to one of your own images here. Here we have text that says destinations, so you can modify this text if you want to name the menu something differently. Now over here, we have these anchor tags, and this is where you can edit the actual menu items. So here you can change the link of the item. And you can also change the name of the link. So for example, this is for UK. That's the first link item. So in this fashion, you can change all of the links. They are all within anchor tags. You can change the link and then you can change the name of the link. All right, so let's take a look at our page again. Let's take a look at these social icons. Here on my page, under the custom header widget area 2, we see that it's utilizing the header widget top right widget area. So that's this widget area here. Let's expand it. And inside this widget area, we can see that we've added some Backpack Traveler Social Icons widget. This widget is located here, so you can Simply drag this widget and add it here if you want to add more social icons. You can also expand the current widgets and you can add your own information here. So we've covered the widget areas that are seen here on page load. Now when I start scrolling down the page, the sticky header appears. And once again, we see some widgets here. Now let's go back to widgets. The widgets in the sticky header are added through the sticky header widget area. But when I expand this widget area, once again, we see that it contains nothing. So let's take a look at our page again. 
Over here, under Mikado header, we have a field that says choose custom widget area in sticky header menu area. So once again, we're using a custom widget area here, and it's the divided header widget. So let's look for this custom widget area. Here it is, let's expand this widget area. And in this widget area, we also have some social icon widgets. So this is where you can edit your widgets for the sticky header. All right, now let's take a look at the logo. I'm going to navigate to our theme options general, and this is where you can upload your theme logo. So the logo that we uploaded here, it can be seen here on this page. However, on my home page, I have a much larger logo with some text underneath. So this page is using a different logo than the logo that we uploaded in global options. So let's take a look at the page again. Let's open up the Mikado logo box. So we can see that on this particular page, we uploaded some different logo images. So that's why on this page, the logo is different than on some other pages of my site. We can see here that the logo image that we uploaded is much larger than the logo as it appears on the site. This is because logo images are being scaled down into a space that's half their size. And this is done so that the logo will be crisp on high definition displays. So when you're uploading your logo images, you should just make sure that you're uploading an image that's twice as big as you want it to display on your site. And it will appear crispy clear on high definition displays. We also recommend uploading your image in all three of these fields for the default dark and light logo versions. And we recommend that all three of your images are the exact same size. And this is in order for the logo to align properly. So if you upload a logo image and it doesn't appear to be centered or you experience some other alignment issues, you should just make sure that all three of these fields are populated and that the logo image is the same size in all three. Now, the logo image dark and light, these are used when you're using one of the light or dark header skins. We've now covered the header, so let's take a look at some of the remaining elements on the page. Here we can see a blog slider. Backpack Traveler comes with many different layouts that you can use to present your posts. So this here is a slider that showcases your posts. Here we also have examples of blog listings. So here we have a nice blog list with these square images. Now let's go into the back end of the page and take a closer look at the blog slider. I've opened up the blog slider shortcode and down here it says image size. So we have several different options for our blog image sizes. This particular blog list is using original sizes, but you can also have your images cropped to square, landscape, or some other sizes. Now on this list here, this particular list is using square images. When you're creating your posts, we recommend uploading a blog list image that's at least 1300 pixels wide and 1300 pixels tall. And the reason we recommend these image dimensions is so that they will crop properly. So let's take a closer look at one of the blog posts. So this here is our single post. Let's go ahead and edit this post. Down here on the page, there's a field here that says blog list image. So this is the image that will appear on your blog listing shortcodes. So we recommend that for this image here, you upload an image that is at least 1300 by 1300 pixels. Now over here, we have an image under featured image, and this is an image that will display on the blog single page. So if I change this image, let's see what happens. I'm going to save this post. 
and let's view this post. So this here image, this is the featured image. So it's important to differentiate between the featured image and the blog list image. The blog list image, this is the image that will appear when you're using a short code that displays your blog posts. For example, the blog slider short code. Let's take a look at the remaining elements on this page. If you want to display your Instagram posts, like we have done here on our demo site, you will need to make sure that the Instagram plugin is installed and activated. That's this plugin here. If you don't have this plugin installed, you can do so in Appearance Install Plugins. And once you activate the plugin, navigate to Theme Options Social Networks. Over here, you can connect with your Instagram account. If you're experiencing any difficulties with connecting to your account, you can reset Instagram. Please follow the instructions from our article that explains how to reset Instagram. We will leave a link to that article under the video description. Let's go back to our home page. Over here, it says top categories. Now, these categories here, they are not post categories, they are destination categories. Let's take a look at the back end again. When you install Backpack Traveler, you will notice that it comes with two custom post types. We have destinations and we also have testimonials. So, the destination, this is one of our custom post types. And this is where you can manage your destinations. Over here, we have a link that says destination categories. So this is where you can edit your destination categories. Here on my site, I have these images over the category names. But if you don't see an image and you would like to add one, you can simply edit that category. So I'm going to click on edit destination category. And this is where you can add an image for this category. Now let's go back. Here on the destination category page, we can see destinations that belong to this particular category. So let's open up a destination. Here I'm going to click on India. This is our destination page. So in order to see how we built this destination page, you can click on edit destination item. On my destination page, I see this text that looks like code. And the reason for that is because WordPress Bakery by default is enabled for pages only. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to click on WordPress Bakery Page Builder Role Manager. Here under post types, it says pages only. I'm going to choose custom. And here you can go ahead and check all the post types that you see and then click on save changes. Let's refresh my destination page. We now have the nice visual page builder. All right, now let's go back to role manager again. I'm going to click on general settings under WordPress bakery. You can also go ahead and check the box that disables the Gutenberg editor because you will be using the WordPress Bakery editor and then go ahead and save changes. All right, so let's take another look at our destination page. So the body of the page was built using WordPress Bakery and you can pretty much see how we created each section by exploring the page admin. Here it says suggested daily budget. Let's see how that section was created. Here we can see a short code that says suggested daily budget. So that's how we created this particular section. This section here with the books, this was created using a product list. So if you would like to have something similar on your destination page, you will need to install and activate WooCommerce and add some products. All right, now let's take a look at this sidebar here. Here we see a map. 
And previously, when we viewed the destination category page, we saw the same map. So I'm going to quickly open that page again. This is the map. So now I'm going to show you how you can change this image. So on your destination page, down here it says Mikado destination additional image. This is the section where you can upload a different image. So the map, it's not a Google map. It's a custom image. Let's go back to the destination category page. Here we can see that there is also a photograph at the top. And the photograph, it's the featured image. So this is where you can change that image. Looking at the sidebar again, there's a button here that says see articles. And when I click on the button, it takes me to a page that lists all the posts that belong to that destination. In order for this to work properly, you need to set a destination posts archive. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to go to global options destination. And over here, it says destination posts page. And currently we have a page called destination posts archive set in this field. So let's locate this page. Here it is. And what's specific about this page is it's using the destination posts page template. It's very important that you have a destinations post page set here. And that this page is using the destination posts page template. Because if you do not have this page set, then the page that lists your posts here for the destination, this will not work properly. Sometimes when users import demo content, they accidentally delete this page here, the destination posts archive page. So if this happens to you, that's fine. You can simply add a new page set the page template to destination posts and then set that page here in global options. So that's important in order for this button here to work properly. All right, now let's take a look at this menu here. When I click on certain menu links, it scrolls down to certain sections of the page. So this is a neat effect. Let's take a look at the destination page backend to see how this section was created. Down here, we have a section called Mikado Additional Destination Sidebar Items. This is the section where you can add items for this menu here. So for each menu item, you can upload a item image, you can enter your text, and you can also enter a link for that item. For our demo site, we added links that point to certain sections of the page. However, you can add any link you want. It doesn't have to take users to some place on that page. Now, if you do want to create this one page scrolling effect, I'm going to show you how that's achieved. Thanks to C, it takes us here at the top. So let's find that section on the page. This is our row, so let's edit this row. Let's click on Mikado settings. And over here, there's a field called Mikado anchor ID, and we entered an anchor called sightseeing. All right, now let's go back to our menu. So here for the link, you will want to enter the link of your destination page. So when you go to your page, this is the link here. And then you will want to make sure that it ends with a slash followed by a hash. And then you have your anchor text. So this is the text that we entered in the row, which I showed a few moments ago. Down here, we have a custom class that says mkdf-anchor. And this text is very important for you to enter if you want the scrolling effect to work. So if you want the scrolling effect, you need to make sure that this class name is entered. Otherwise, the scrolling will not work. So this is how we created the various items in our sidebar. 
we pretty much covered destinations in a nutshell. Let's go back to our home page. Finally, we're going to talk about the footer. On this page here, we can see that the footer is comprised of two different sections. There's a top footer and there's also a bottom footer. In order to add content to your footer, you will need to add widgets. So let's navigate to Appearance Widgets. Here we will find widget areas that belong to the footer. Let's take a look at the top footer. Here it says footer top column one. Let's open up this widget area. Inside we see that there is an image widget that contains the map. So this section here, this is just a regular image. It's not a Google map. And you can change this image by editing your image here. All right, so you can take a look at how we created these various widgets by exploring the footer widget areas. For the menu here at the bottom, let's find this widget area. So this is the footer bottom column two, and here we see that it contains a navigation menu widget. So here you can set your footer menu. The available menus here are the ones that were created in appearance menus. So in this video, we covered the basics of working with Backpack Traveler. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned something new. If you would like to be notified about upcoming videos where we share helpful tips and tools for building your site, you can subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions about the video, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Thank you for watching.